Good morning, everyone. We are here for the Morning Blessing program once again to help you, to pray for you, no matter your religion, no matter your background, no matter what. We are here to help anyone. Yes, you who have faith. You have faith. You believe this program is for you. It is for everyone who have faith, no matter your religion. At the end of this program, I'm actually going to be making a prayer for all of you. A prayer for strength, a prayer for guidance, a prayer for light in our ways. Amen? I want to leave our lines open for you who want to call and speak to one of our pastors. Our helpline is there in your screen. And you can give us a call right now. Maybe you are feeling down today, you are not feeling well, you are feeling weak. You are confused, you're feeling lost, maybe you couldn't sleep last night, and you are in need of a word of encouragement, you are in need of an advice. Maybe right now you are in a hospital or you have a family member in a hospital. You can give us a call asking for a visit. If you are around one of our branches, one of our pastors will be there in the hospital to visit you or to visit your family member. Today, we're going to be sharing with you a testimony of faith that I am sure that will help you. Pay close attention in this testimony and we'll be back straight after. Childhood and early teenage years was marked by abandonment, the feelings of loneliness and uh, neglect. I felt neglected. My father was never at home. He was a, a very absent man. Uh, the only times I actually saw my father were when I literally had to carry him home from the pub. Uh, you know, many times laying on the floor, I would carry him home uh, at the age of six or seven. I also remember have going through many difficulties, uh, financial difficulties as well, because because my father would drink so much, he would spend all his money on his drinking. My mother was there with us, but at the same time, all her life was uh, revolved around my father. And uh, I think the lowest moment was when I was sexually abused. I was molested as a kid by a family member. No one knew that for many years, and I had to suffer on my own. And as a way to cope with that, uh, I put up a front, a facade. I would pick up fights in school. I would bully all the kids in school just to feel the attention. I wanted the attention. I, I wanted to feel accepted, which was something I didn't have at home. But obviously that didn't last for very long because in, on the inside, I was getting more and more frustrated, more and more depressed. I would cry myself to sleep at night. I felt invisible. I felt like no one could help me. My mom was the first one who came to the church and obviously she brought us with her. The situation on the outside started to improve. My, my father stopped drinking, never looked back again. And uh, obviously he, he got a good job. So obviously our financial situation improved so much. And uh, I was at peace. My home was a, a piece of heaven then. However, on the inside, I was still the same. If not, I was getting worse worse and worse. And again, I still felt invisible. I still felt lonely, still had so many complexes. I hated myself. I was disgusted with myself, especially because of the abuse that I had suffered. And then I was, there was a day I was so tired. I was fed up with, with this situation. And for the first time, even if I had been coming to church for many years, for the first time I heard the voice of God. It's like God talked to me on that day. God remembered me amongst you know, all, all, all the people that in that church, it's like God was talking to me. It was in that moment that I understood that I needed the Holy Spirit. And I started to seek the Holy Spirit with everything I had because I finally understood that that's only then would I be truly happy. And it, it was a few months of seeking and making purposes and, you know, praying and really surrendering to God. And then there was a day, a specific day when I did receive the Holy Spirit. On that day, everything changed for good. Never again was I the same. All my inner issues were gone. You know, I didn't feel lonely anymore because I knew God was with me. Even when I had all my family around, I still felt lonely. But when I received the Holy Spirit, that's when, you know, I really knew God is with me. And then because I was different on the inside, on the outside, things started to work for me. That's when I, uh, my grades went up. I was already at the end of, of, of my uh, school years. I was admitted in the best university of my state. I could then uh, choose a career that I loved. Uh, I got uh, a job and I got the opportunity to com come to the UK to do my post-grad 
studies, uh, everything paid by the agencies that back home. Um, I found my wife, you know, I thought uh, from for someone that I thought I was unlovable, I couldn't love, I had so many issues on the inside. Today I'm happily married, I have a beautiful wife, we serve God as assistants, both of us. Today we have the pleasure of helping people uh, understand that God is there for them and that, that God remembers them. It's not like they're alone, just like God did for me, we can help God do that for others today. My family is a blessing, my parents are a blessing. Um, I have a dream job now. I work as a, a university lecturer, which is the job I always dreamed to have. So God has given me all of that, but always started on that day that I received the Holy Spirit. It's been 20 years that God remembered me. And from that day on, things have changed so much. But the most important thing is really His presence inside of me, constantly reminding me that He's with me, that I never have to feel alone again. And that goes for anyone that has ever felt alone. God remembers you if you remember Him. And I'm genuinely happy and fulfilled today because God remembered me. Yes, my dear friend, not everything is physical. Not everything is visible. There are spiritual problems. There are problems that science will not explain. There are sickness that cannot be diagnosed by a doctor. There are situations that we face in life that are created by a spirit. It characterizes a spiritual problem. And the question is, how can I solve a spiritual problem in the physical field? There is no way. There is no way to sort out, to solve a spiritual problem in the physical field. I have to bring this problem to the spiritual field. And that's why we have in our Fridays services, every Friday in our church, these deliverance prayers. It's a prayer where we bring our problems, we bring our challenges, we bring the situation that the person is going through to the spiritual field, to God. And we believe that when we bring our problems to God and He is a spirit and He is waiting for you, there is nothing impossible for Him. There is nothing too hard for Him. You know, my dear friend, we have this passage in the Bible that perhaps you don't know or you know it says that the Lord is a spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So once you leave your house, you leave your home, you leave your work, you leave the place where you are, maybe in a hospital, and you come to these prayers, you, you come, you bring your problem to God, who is a spirit and is here, my dear friend, I am sure that you're going to see a breakthrough. This spiritual problem that you are facing will disappear from your life. No matter how big it is, panic attacks, insomnia, maybe you are struggling with depression, maybe you are struggling with addiction, you are addicted to something or a family member is addicted and you don't know what else to do. Tried rehab, counseling, a, psychi a psycho psychiatrist, but though the people that they try their best to help you, they couldn't. Why? Why the doctor, the psychiatrist couldn't help me, Pastor? Because the problem is spiritual. I don't know your problem. I don't know how big is your problem. But I challenge you to bring your problem to God, to the one who can help you, the one who can solve this problem because there is nothing impossible for him. So this Friday, we have branches across Sydney. Our headquarters is here at Northumberland Street, 153 Northumberland Street, just near to Westfield in Liverpool. We have also in Blacktown, 125 Main Street in Blacktown, Chatswood 121 Victoria Ave 
in Chatsuit. You can go to our website and see the locations of our other branches across Australia. You can give us a call if you have any question, any doubt. We are here to help you, my dear friend. We are here to guide you. And I am sure that once you manifest your faith, once you use your faith, this situation, this spiritual problem that you are going through will disappear from your life. Why am I still alive? My health, my finances, my love life, everything is a mess. I work hard, but I can't even pay my bills. I'm educated, but I can't find a job. I'm a good person, but I can't find the right person. My house is haunted. I hear footsteps all the time. And I just found out I have the same disease my mom had. Why am I still alive? If everything is going wrong, despite how hard you try, then your problem is not normal. Join us every Friday for Deliverance. Well, my dear friend, before our prayer, I would like to share something with you. Here in the book of Isaiah 49, in verse 15, it says, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? It's a question. It's a question that makes us to think, can a woman, a mother, forget, forget her child that is still nursing? God says, surely they may forget. And we have seen this. Mothers abandon their, child, their children. We have seen in the news things like this happening. So God was right here. It can happen. But let us see what he says next. Yet, I will not forget you. I will not forget you. God, he never forget his people. God, he never forget those who believe in him. Maybe right now you feel like God forgot me. God forgot me. God doesn't care for me. But my dear friend, that's not true. That's not true. God, he never forget those who once came to him, those who believe in him. Maybe you are going through a lot of problems in your life right now. And it's because you are away from God. Maybe even... You are going to the church every now and then, or you come every day in the church, but you are still away from God for some situation, for some problem that you, you went through and it created doubts. It created inside of you discouragement. My dear friend, we are approaching to one of the most important days for our Christian faith. And I want to invite you, you who are, from any other religion, I want to invite you to come on this 29th of March, the last Sunday of this month, the Sunday of Resurrection, and we're going to have this event in all our churches in Australia, the day of Remember Me. Remember Me. And I am sure that in this day, my dear friend, something will happen in your life. You're going to receive the peace. You're going to receive the joy. You're going to receive the assurance that this word here is true. Just come. Just join us. You are away from the church. You are away from God. Or you know someone who is away from God and you want to bring this person who right now is there and thinks like this. God forgot me. Is the opportunity. It says more here in the Bible. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. 
God, he has your name, the name of this person in his hands. And all that he is way, all that he needs to transform the situation that you are facing in life right now, all that God needs to remove this emptiness from inside of you, this sadness, this anxiety, is for you to come to Him with a sincere faith. Yes, so prepare yourself, prepare your guests. You are an evangelist, you are an assistant of the church. Prepare yourself for this day. Bring someone with you in this day. And I am sure, my dear friend, that in this day, something wonderful will happen in the life of the, all those who are feeling like forgotten by God. Remember, remembering that we are in this journey of faith, these Sundays before the Sunday of resurrection, we are presenting this water to God that actually we receive a drop of the water that was consecrated on the Mount Sinai. We receive at the door of our church a drop with the blessed water inside of our bottle of water. And we drink during the service, preparing ourselves for this great day and receiving by faith the power of God inside of us healing, deliverance, there are many testimonies taking place in all our branches, and I believe that your testimony can be the next. So join us, join us, and it's going to be a blessing for you and for your family. Be my guest. We're going to pray now, and I would like you to prepare yourself for this prayer. The cross upon which Jesus died Is a shelter in which we can hide And its grace is so free Is sufficient for me And deep is its fountain as wide as the sea there is room where the cross for you there is room at the cross for you though millions have gone there's still room for one yes there's room at the cross for When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. My Lord and my Father, in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, I unite my faith with the faith of this person, no matter his religion, no matter, my Lord, what he believes. If, my Lord, there is faith inside of this person, there is, my Lord, already your hand working in his life. Yes, my Lord, 
this person who is sincere, this person who is looking for a way out, this person who is looking for this light, let this light shine in his life right now. Those who are already in your presence, my Lord, then they never miss a program. I ask you for you to meet their necessities, my Lord. I don't know what is the necessity of this person, but I know that you have the power, my Lord, to meet the necessities of each one of them. So those who need healing, let them receive healing right now. Those who are in need of deliverance, let this person receive the deliverance right now. We strain for those who are weak, my Lord. Peace for those who are feeling down, frustrated, confused. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for all. I pray for the families as well, my Lord, and I surrender this day in your hands. Bless this person, my Lord, in whatever he will do. Let this Tuesday be a blessing for all those who believe. And if you believe and you receive, you can say Amen and praise God. Amen. Amen, my dear friend. There will be breakthrough. You can join even today in one of our branches for the Tuesday service where we pray for healing. If you know anyone who is sick, you can invite to join one of our services throughout the day. Our next service is 10 a.m. We will have also 3 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Remember that we are in this fast of Daniel, 21 days, we started yesterday, 21 days where we are separating ourselves and investing more time in the Word of God. Separating ourselves from what? Separating ourselves from entertainment, from secular information. It's not a fast of food, but it's a fast of information in order for us to be more connected to God. If you are seeking the Holy Spirit, join us today, tomorrow, any day during this week, and come close to the altar and ask God the Holy Spirit. He said, if a son asks for a fish, his father will not give him a scorpion or a snake. If his son, a son asks for a bread, his father will not give him a stone. So come with this faith inside of you and ask God for the Holy Spirit. You can start this fast of Daniel with us today. And you can maybe call our church right now, call one of our pastors or the helpline that is showing on your screen and ask more information about the fast of Daniel. You can also join us, come to the church and ask one of our pastors how to do, how to start the fast of Daniel. We are here to help you. May God bless you all. Stay safe and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.